welcome to this uh, series of webinar. This is the first webinar about how to excel in the digital age, so a dive into the world of computer science, and particularly with OPET. Today is the first day of our series of webinars, and we meet the founder, Ricardo Kleppo, founder of OPET at OPET. Um, so just Briefly, before we, we start, I wanted to remind you that this is a series of webinars. You can join us um, every Thursday from now until the end of August. Um, we have these webinars at 4 p.m. Uh, Central European time. It's on Zoom, and we're going to introduce you to different type of scenarios of the computer science. And in particular, today, we start with why uh, we launched this institution with Ricardo. And then we're going to talk uh, next week. It's about the methodology and the platform, so a showcase of the learning approach. Uh, then another uh, webinar about the mission process of step-by-step -step guide to, to the process. And then, like uh, again, a faculty demo lesson that's very interesting and important. If you want to join us on the 10th of August, we'll have a lesson with a professor of the program and you can actually enjoy um, how to use the, the platform and what to expect during a demo lesson. Then we'll have other ones so just wanted to point out the first the first three. But uh, without any further ado, today we are with Ricardo. Ricardo Kleppo is the founder of OPIT. He designed OPIT degree programs. He thought about launching a new institution. He's also, before that, he's also especially an entrepreneur within the education sector. He's been in the education sector for many years. So um, I'm going to ask him a few questions, but please, everybody, feel free to ask questions in the Q&A. And if you want to talk as well, I'm going to give you, allow you to just talk on the microphone. Um, so before we start, Ricardo, maybe you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself. Um, sure, thank you, Greta, and uh, it's, a, it's a great pleasure for me to be here, and uh, I've been looking forward to this moment for, uh, for quite some time. Um, uh, of course, I've been very much involved in the, in the, in the construction of, uh, of this new uh, big endeavor in the educational sector, and uh, I have a background as an entrepreneur. I, I, I am the founder of one of the biggest communities worldwide uh, for students. Uh, it's called Doxity. And um, um, I am a tech person. Um, I am an electronics engineer. And uh, I've also attended the master's in management in, uh, in London Business School, which is one of the most prestigious business schools in the world. And uh, one thing that I wanted to, to talk with you about today um, to begin with, and then I, I, I'm also eager to, to understand from you which, which are your questions and, uh, and to provide you answers as far as I can, um, is the reason why I decided to found OBIT, which is um, a new higher education institution in, in a space, which is the space of computer science, which is in super high demand in today's job market. Um, it's a very uh, deep answer, the one that I, I, I want to provide to you. And um, it goes back to, to a double perspective that I was basically able to uh, build throughout my, my career, um, first as a student and then, of course, an entrepreneur. So the first perspective is the academic perspective. So the message that I want to pass to you is how difficult it is for traditional educational institutions and universities to adapt to change, to um, create new uh, existing programs, to add new modules that are up to date with uh, the, the latest trends and technologies in the field. And this is especially true in the field of computer science. So. Um, Traditional educational institutions uh, are very, very slow to adapt to this uh, uh, wave of new technologies and new trends within the educational sector and, and specifically in the, in the field of computer science. And I can, and I can, uh, I've seen multiple times how difficult it is to help these institutions to, to update their study uh, curricula. Um, just, to, just to give you an example, I, I am in a board uh, in Italy, uh, which includes some of the most prestigious tech universities in Italy, and uh, uh, we started a work two years ago on how to update their study programs 
and make them more compelling, more uh, aligned to what companies are looking for today on the job market. And uh, after two years of work, uh, I was very much frustrated because all that we obtained, uh, we've, we, we've, we have obtained is that um, uh, the only thing that we were going to add to the to these new programs were just two modules on new technologies. So basically, um, this is the first perspective that I wanted to talk with you about. So how difficult it is for traditional educational institutions to adapt to uh, an evolving scenario. The other one is, 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 um, is the company perspective. So uh, how frustrating it is for companies to uh, bridge the huge skill gap that new graduates have when they enter the job market. So typically a company needs uh, one to two years to make people that should be trained on today's technologies and on today's skills and, uh, and make them uh, effectively uh, enter uh, the job market and be productive when they enter these companies. Um, I've seen it myself. So throughout my experience uh, as an entrepreneur, I, I, I was able to put together um, very big tech teams uh, in a number of companies that I either created or uh, or managed, and uh, in doing so, I I, I believe I, I've interviewed more than four hundred or five hundred um, computer scientists or programmers or anyways tech people, and uh, I've seen it myself the difficulty of finding the right candidates. And when I, when I mean finding the right candidates, I mean people that are trained on today's technologies, not on 20 years ago's te technologies. And on the other side, that um, have real skills that they can apply from day zero when they enter the, co the, the company, in, in those cases, my companies. So, this is the double perspective that I wanted to talk with you about. And, and basically putting together this, these two angles um, came the idea, especially when I, when I started confronting myself with other entrepreneurs, with other managers, and ultimately with Professor Profumo, which is our rector and which is a former minister of education, which has a very, very strong uh, expertise and, and, and know-how on what are the shortages on the on the job market? What are the skills? What are the 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 gaps that need to be filled? And so, basically, putting together all this work, uh, we came with the idea of creating something new, something that could bridge this gap, and something that could um, provide a new way of delivering computer science education uh, to today's students in a way that is much more aligned to what companies are looking for, basically. And like when you were thinking about that, what, what type of goals, what type of like vision you had, what type of uh, organization you wanted to create? So basically the, the whole purpose behind OPIT is to train the next generation of uh, leaders and managers uh, in the field of computer science. Um, this means uh, being able well, firstly, uh, to deliver a, a, a tier one education uh, in this field, which means putting together the best professors, uh, putting together the best learning material, uh, to put together the, the best te teaching methodology that could leverage all the, the advancements that uh, were made in the last few years in terms of uh, online teaching and uh, uh, somehow connecting it to real skills that today's employers, or even yourself, if you decide to become an entrepreneur, you would need when, when, you, when you start doing things in the job market. So it's kind of uh, like this, this double thing that you have to put together. So extremely high quality teaching, and on the other side, uh, make it extremely like competency-based, practical, in a way that when you enter companies, you are capable of delivering like high quality uh, in a in a in a timely manner without having uh, the, the people within the companies waiting for for years before you're being productive, in a sense. 
Well, that's quite an ambition and we all joined us uh, knowing that that was like a goal for everybody. But when you actually went designing it, like what do you think that distinguishes now OPIT from other university and other institutions offering similar programs in the field of computer science? That's a very good question. Of course, uh, um, I mean, I have a very, I'm, I'm, I'm very humble, but I, I, I must say that I, I have a very deep understanding of what is the offering out there. And uh, this is mainly due to my experience with Doxity, which is a huge community for students, but also uh, a strong partner for more than uh, 250 universities throughout the globe. So I've been talking with universities for the last 10 years. Uh, we've been helping them recruiting students, improving programs. And of course, I've been diving into this, um, uh, this uh, space of computer science more and more in the last few years. So when it comes to uh, underlying what is the difference between OPIT and other universities, um, I can talk about a lot of stuff, but what interests me is, the, um, is how our programs have been conceived and how they're gonna be delivered to our students in order to bring that value that I was talking about before. So let's take the, the Bachelor in uh, Modern Computer Science right, for example. Um, this bachelor has been built in order to provide students with strong foundational skills in the very first terms. This means understanding how a computer is built, right? If you want to be a great programmer, you cannot just like dive into programming itself. You need to understand how a computer is built, how instructions are uh, processed, by the, the, the central processing units. And uh, you need to know how, how memories work, how communications within the, the central processing unity of a, of a computer works. You need to know that because uh, when you will be de debugging your code as a programmer, uh, this will provide you like uh, uh, an incredible understanding of the underlying systems and will make your work much more effective and much uh, more uh, quick. But on the other side, we don't just want to like focus on foundations and uh, like teach you, uh, let me say, 20 years ago computer science as it happens in, in many universities. So what, we, what we've done is actually start from there, but then bring you towards all the latest advancements in computer science. So gradually, you will start having modules on introduction to machine learning, artificial intelligence, data science, uh, cybersecurity, cloud computing, and uh, uh, in a way that you will basically have a, a, a unique and very broad perspective uh, on the field of computer science. And this is quite different between uh, uh, our approach compared to what other universities do. So what typically other universities do is to have a lot more like math mathematics, first of all, which is a, a, a topic which often scares like uh, aspiring programmers. Um, also because maybe it's not strictly necessary mathematics to, to become a very good programmers. And uh, most of the times they require a, an upfront choice on the field where you want to specialize upfront. So they do not provide such a broader view on, on, the, on the computer science area. And that's what we do. We want to go deep, but we also want to go wide. Uh, the purpose of a bachelor is, in, in my opinion, is this. Then if you want to specialize, uh, then there are master of science, in, in, my, in my personal opinion. And of course, uh, um, I can talk about a lot of other stuff, but I also want to spend a few words on the, on the um, Master of Science in Applied Data Science and AI. Uh, the angle for this uh, Master of Science is uh, quite different, let me say. Um, the, the whole purpose of this uh, Master of Science is actually to train people that uh, do not want to pursue a super technical career, but actually want to pursue a career at the intersection between uh, the tech and the management of a company. 
Uh, why we've done this? Uh, because we firmly believe that in the coming future, the biggest shortage of people will be tech people, yes, but also people um, capable of translating um, what management requires into technical requirements and then back. So making sure that uh, tech people are being correctly understood by the management of the company. And so with this Master of Science, we, we've basically um, put together quite a unique product, which is uh, quite, a, quite unique in the, in the overall panorama of, uh, of computer science uh, training. This means that uh, it does not require like very strong prerequisites in terms of uh, um, tech skills. We will provide students with uh, strong foundational skills in Python, in cloud computing, in uh, machine learning, and in AI within term one. Um, we will do that uh, theoretically, yes, but also with an applicative uh, uh, angle, which means that you will learn to use the available tools today's on the today that are today on the market. Uh, we will provide you with uh, a lot of. Uh, um, business understanding through some courses which are business communication and business problem solving and all the the whole goal of this term one is actually to make you prepared for term two which is where you will take the learnings both on the business side and on the technical side and with professors coming from um very tier one uh, uh, academic institutions, but also tier one companies like Morgan Stanley and others, you will basically be capable of learning a methodology of adapting these learnings to real life uh, problems and uh, uh, real life uh, company scenarios and, and basically train for what you will be doing when you enter the, your, your, next, uh, your next job. So helping business grow by using AI and data science. So um, yeah, I can, I, I can <laughs> Greta, if you want to jump in, you, you can. Yeah, I, I, no, there was I a... have a few more things to say. <laughs> yeah, no, it just there was, since you just uh, said something about the methodology, the learning experience, we received uh, many questions about the <laughs> learning experience. So maybe if you like to elaborate a little bit more about that, just I'll give you an example. I was talking to a candidate like an hour ago and he was just asking, what is the difference? What does it mean about taking the exams continually, like the continuous assessment? How do I learn more? It's just uh, something that maybe uh, we're not used to in the standard uh, traditional education, so. Um, absolutely. Um, so what is the main problem of online education? Um, in my opinion, is to get lost. To, to not be followed, to uh, have uh, very few checkpoints that uh, actually will make you lost throughout the process. And this is, this is proven by a, num a number, an incredible number of uh, statistics and, 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 and reports and white papers. So if we want to be successful as an institution in delivering our promise to our students, we have to find a way to, to make this kind of learning engaging and, uh, uh, and, and deep at the same time. So our learning model, it's basically a model around the, the need of overcoming this big, this big problem of online education. So this means that instead of just giving you one single checkpoint for every single module, which comes at the end, uh, we actually want to stimulate our students uh, for a, a continuous learning methodology, maybe a bit uh, less, but continuously. Not that uh, uh, like students will not like uh, like not developing a methodology that will uh, allow students to, to not follow the lessons or to not uh, go through the material for the, the, the most of the course and then take the exam at the end, uh, which ultimately translates in, uh, um, like, again, getting lost, uh, poor understanding of the concepts, and, uh, and also a lot of stress, let me say, which is not good for health and, and especially also for learning. So 
Um, this is why we, we opted for uh, a continuous assessment approach. And in order to support that, we're not just using available resources or resources created for the oldest wave of education. So we are creating from scratch all the learning material uh, that you will be accessing when you will be on the platform. This means that um, we are training, <laughs> you might smile on that, we're training our professors on our learning methodology. We're training them on, on being effective, on being energetic when they speak uh, throughout the, the camera. And uh, we are um, having them developing like video content material, which is engaging, which is uh, short enough, but deep enough to provide uh, like uh, to not to not lose you throughout the educational experience, but also to provide you with all the content and all the information that you need. You will have um, quizzes throughout uh, the modules that will basically uh, test your learning, but also help you learn in a more engaging and, and interesting way. Um, we've been specifically selecting our professors to meet these uh, these standards, not just in terms of. Uh, knowledge but also in terms of uh, being engaging and also in terms of being practical in terms of being able to connect the teaching of computer science to real life uh, business problems and uh, applicative scenarios but i mean it's a it's a like 360 um way of thinking that we we undertook so another thing that we are mm, developing and that we're taking at heart is that the competencies that you will be learning um, throughout uh, our programs will be applicable on the job. What does that mean? It means that in specific courses where this is possible, we are aligning what you will learn to official certificates by vendors. Uh, just to give you an example, the cloud computing course in uh, the first term of the Master of Science will actually allow you to get the certificate as AWS uh, uh, Cloud practi Practitioner, for example. And this is, this is a process that we've been not sponsoring, we've, we've been not promoting, uh, but that we're doing behind the scenes. And so I hope I, one thing that I <laughs> actually forgot is also the tutoring. That's what like was another, there are a couple okay. of questions. One question was about really the tutoring and the other one about again, the faculty. So you just explain it, um, but maybe say like, what do they bring to the table? This is important. What do they bring to the table? And then also the support. This is something that uh, maybe is a little bit different as well. So maybe you want to elaborate on that. Yeah. So um, I already spent a few words on our professors. I'm proud to say that uh, We've been an we've done an amazing job in uh, in uh, selecting like professors. We had uh, a huge number of uh, like candidates, uh, and we've been very strict in making sure that we we brought on board people that yes knew today's computer science, uh, which is not for granted. I mean, when you, when you are like bringing on board academics. Uh, it's not for granted, <laughs> let me say. So we wanted to have people that are extremely up to date uh, with the latest technologies and the latest trends in the field. But we also wanted to bring on board people that could combine academic teaching with strong uh, competencies learned um, while like working in a, in a, in a company. So. Um, <laughs> One typical say, and uh, maybe Greta, you can uh, stop recording. <laughs> no, I'm, jo I'm joking. What, what one thing that uh, like it, it's common practice in academics is to say that if you cannot do, you can teach, right? We we didn't want to have people that uh, uh, can teach because they cannot do. We actually wanted to have people that uh, do and know how to do, and so they actually also know how to teach. And this is the, the standard that we, we took into consideration in bringing people on board and, and professors on board. So this is what you can expect. You can expect people that are engaged with our mission, that are very, very knowledgeable in terms of uh, 
today's computer science and uh, that are capable of providing you with that extra thing that will make uh, hopefully the learning experience uh, very great with us. Uh, spending a, a word on the, tu on the, on the tutoring or, or on the support that we will provide. I, I guess that if you're here, you already met with, uh, with Greta, you already met with Chiara, you might have met uh, um, Rosario and a few other people in the team. We apply the same standard that we have for, for professors with uh, making sure that um, the, the whole, let me say, administrative team in Opit, it's, uh, it's made of great professionals on one side, but on the other side, we are also making sure that you will receive the, the best um, uh, spot on support, like when you will need help on specific areas of your studies or on how like machine learning uh, algorithms are trained or whatever. And to do so, we're making sure that we're bringing the best tutors on board and uh, um, Basically, through our platform and possibly through our social networking uh, software, uh, which is likely to be Slack, um, you will be able to access uh, um, like uh, seven days a week support from, uh, from our uh, tutors, which will basically be there to help you answer those needs and uh, uh, hopefully also bridge that gap that I was referring to before, which is... Uh, like making sure you don't get lost. You're Perfectly. Good. I always say that like sometimes they sleep our tutors because they ask 24 seven, but they sleep as well. <laughs> Just like, but they will be available. This is kind of a difference sure. with that is for sure. And um, then I, I ask everybody, if you want to ask questions, please write in the chat. Or if you want to talk, I can give you also the permission to talk. I, I have the power to, to just give you that. Um, I, we received one question, like beside questions about um, in general, this was also a question that was asked to you, I think in an interview in such an evolving field, like the computer science, what key elements, how to prepare best to this ever-changing landscape of technology and industry demands. So this is something that uh, is asked a lot as well by, with so many uh, journalists in general, how, how to adapt to this ever-changing landscape? What do you think? So one thing that I can tell you, and um, I've been a programmer myself, I said it many times, I'm a, I, I, I love building tech products. Um, one thing that I want to, to stress and maybe a bit more is that uh, if you learn a programming language and if you go straight to, to programming, like, like many coding schools do, like many coding boot camps do, that's what you learn. So, and 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 computer science is made of uh, like fashions, right? So today there is a React or there is a JavaScript or there is a Java for 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 the backend and and so on. And tomorrow there might be something else. So if you do that kind of path, which uh, brings you like straight forward to the to the outcome, which is learning a programming language. The, the real danger that you will face in a few months or in a few years is that the programming language will change and you will have to, to learn, learn a new one. The, the, what, what I love about higher education and about uh, a, a, a deeper way of seeing your learning experience and your training is that uh, with our program, but I am say with, uh, with a bachelor in computer science in general, what you will learn is to learn the fundamentals of computer, computer science, right? So you, you will not just like go straight to the point and learn the latest technology. You will learn the basic foundations. And by doing so, you will be able to adapt as the uh, computer science field will evolve and will evolve. And it's evolving as we speak. And uh, um, I believe this is the, the best way to like future-proof your, your career. So you're saying that you never stop studying anyway. <laughs> Learning is continuous. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. I see there is a, another question due to the slide. I missed the beginning, so I apologize. But I want to ask what the idea for OPIT originated from. So we did talk about that, but maybe Ricardo, as a as a finishing comment, do you want to go back to that so that you can 
Sure. Kind of and uh, again, if you have any more questions, uh, like feel free to, to ask. So just to, to make it very short for the others that were here from the, the very beginning, uh, it goes, goes back to my experience. And in my experience, I was able to put together um, a double perspective. One is from the academics point of view. Um, I've been talking with hundreds of universities throughout my entrepreneurial experience with, with Doxity. And, um, and I've been involved in a lot of like uh, tables with top universities in Italy for updating the, the, the teaching of computer science. And I've been frustrated myself to understand how difficult it is for these institutions to adapt to a change. So, so you will still learn like 20 years ago computer science in, in most cases. And on the other side, I've seen it myself as, a, as an entrepreneur and talking with a lot of other entrepreneurs and managers in different fields, how frustrating it is to, uh, to hire people that are not uh, ready for like being effective in a company environment because they know yesterday's technologies because they are not trained on, on, on soft skills that maybe a programmers today needs to know like project management or things like that. So basically putting together this double perspective and then confronting myself with, with Professor Profumo and with a lot of other people, uh, we, we, <laughs> we in very short, we came with this idea of creating something new and something radically better. Okay. Okay. So I would just like uh, recommend everybody, if you want to, if you don't want to ask questions now, to connect with uh, Ricardo. He's available on LinkedIn. He can always answer your questions. I see there is another one. Is a background in computer science necessary to access the master programs? I'm very interested in artificial intelligence. Okay. I don't know if you want to go and answer that. So, Ricardo, it's about the background. Yeah, yeah, I I kind of mentioned that before. Um, the, the answer is no. The reason that the way we build our master of science uh, is uh, to be open and to be uh, accessible. Um, this means that uh, we will teach you the foundational of like tech uh, from from the very beginning, from term one. Um, this means that you will learn cloud computing, you will learn Python, you will learn AI, you will learn uh, machine learning, but mostly from an applicative point of view. So when you will not become the super tech because it will take years, of course. <laughs> and uh, But what, what you will need to know is to understand what, what you're talking about and to understand how to apply this knowledge to real, like, company problems. So what we actually need is not strong tech prerequisite. What we do need is a strong motivation and a strong interest in the field of computer science. This is a thing that we need throughout the programs. So uh, the success, of course, uh, is, uh, is a combination of what we will be able to deliver you and how uh, genuine and strong is your interest in developing these skills, of course, and uh, the intersection will, will make up for the success. Okay, thank you so much again, Ricardo, for being with us. As I said, for any further questions, uh, you can always reach to either us or Ricardo himself on LinkedIn, he's always there available to answer. Um, I'm going to continue with presenting a little bit the courses, and so if you if you have more questions for Ricardo, as I said, you can write them here or we'll reach out later on. But for the meantime, thank you so much for being having been here with us. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to just pre very briefly continue the presentation. Um, this was just like Ricardo saying that I wanted to share with you again, because it's very important for us that we wanted to start from scratch to go beyond the limits of the traditional higher education. And we started, as I, as Ricardo mentioned, with two programs. One is the Bachelor in Modern Computer Science, and the, the other one is the Master in Data Science and Artificial Intelligence. So a few words about the Bachelor. Ricardo already said much, many things about it, but just very briefly about the um, how, how it's actually designed. It's designed over three years, but you can actually do it in two years. This is another uh, key facts uh, of our programs. You can study um, the programs with a fast track option. 
by sacrificing a little bit your summer, you can actually finish a bit earlier in both programs. We will start in September, uh, the 25th of September, 2023. As Ricardo said, it's a competency-based teaching approach and we're very focused on students with progressive assignments. And the, the bachelor is divided into um, six terms. Um, in every term of the first five terms, there is uh, also a business or general management course. And then you have the, the fifth term, which is about the electives. You can choose five electives out of 13. And at the end, a dissertation. So a dissertation is a thesis, a project, something about putting into practice everything that you have learned. The, the program, as I said, uh, will start on the 25th of uh, September. And if you finish, if you just go for the fast track, you will finish up after two years. The Master in Applied Data Science and Artificial Intelligence is a Master of Science. So while the, the bachelor is 180 CTS, because we are, of course, accredited and as degrees, we, we actually issue ECTS. In this case, we are 90 ECTS and it's an 18 month program. So one year and a half that you can actually finish in one year if you just go for the fast track. Um, you already mentioned about applying your knowledge in multiple industries. So it's a lot about application. We give you the foundation at the beginning and then you move on to the applied um, data science, artificial intelligence to different business scenarios. Again, with business communication and project management courses along the way with the certification that we mentioned before. And there are no specific prerequisites on computer science to answer one of the questions that was asked. Um, again, you will finish with the final project or an internship. So an internship within the company, if you're already working for a company, could be a consulting project for your own company. And again, we're going to start in September 2023, so the 25th of September, together with the bachelor. Um, just a few words about the general entry requirements. What we required basically is your certificate of previous learning. So to attend the bachelor, you would need to have a high school certificate um, and to attend the master, a bachelor degree in any discipline. Uh, we require the English proficiency as B2 level. So if you have studied in English as well, you can just, we can discuss about that during the interview, but in general, we require a certificate also for uh, the accreditation process. And we do recognize um, some credits. If you already study in a university and you want just some credits to be recognized, you can send us the documents and we're gonna check everything with you. Uh, the application is quite straightforward. So you apply online with the application um, uh, being on our website, you fill it out and then uploading your documents, CV and other admission documents such as your transcripts and uh, certificate of English. And then we, you, you, will be, you will be asked to join us for an interview. It's a motivational interview. So it's mostly about why you want to apply, what you bring to the table, what you expect, everything about yourself and the program. And then you can be ready to start your journey. The, the fees, we mentioned that we try to be affordable as much as possible. So the bachelor is 4,500 euros per year, over three years. <clears throat> it, there are discounts um, if you pay upfront. We also have some financial aid support. And the master is 6,500. And if you pay upfront, it's 5,200. So we have different installment plans that we're going to hear, be here to support you in that with the financial aid as well. And you can um, click on the apply now or that you can see if I end on our on our website. I just leave you the code to chat with us on WhatsApp in case. So the QR code and you can or you can write to hello at hopeit.com and we can schedule an interview, anything in order to support you in your journey in computer science. OK, I see that there is another for the questions. Any chance to have an Italian language version of the course? I don't know, Riccardo, if you want to embark on that <laughs> for the future. Um, it's not planned. I, I just want to be honest. <laughs> um, uh, one thing that we are discussing is to add subtitles in many different languages to all the video content that we will make available online. Uh, I believe that you are, if you're not super proficient in English, this could also be the chance for you to become. Uh, yes. And uh, and this will make up for another great, like free value added of attending such a course. Okay. Oh, we have a bit, sorry, we didn't talk about that, Ricardo. So maybe you can take it up because this is very important. Thanks, Tommaso, for ask, asking this question. The question is Do you think it's possible to attend the bachelor while working full time? Okay. 
So this is something that we actually design the courses for people that are actually working. So I don't know, Ricardo, if you want to yeah, take it. I, I mean, um, the one of the benefits of online is being flexible. This means uh, uh, being able also to somehow balancing a full-time job with the with the need of or the will to, to progress in their career with additional training. And um, uh, this means that we've been, we've been basically designing the content in a way that all the asynchronous learning material will be accessible to you uh, at any time on the platform. Uh, on the other side, the, the uh, live sessions with the, um, with the professors, and there's gonna be one for every single module every week, basically throughout the term, are scheduled in the European afternoon, late afternoon, I would say. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, what else? Uh, what should well, we you, have? you can watch the lessons recorded. We said Perfect. that you can actually, uh, so you don't have to attend. We recommend it, but you do not, do not have to attend. And the the workload is, it depends on you, Tomazo, as well on your or previous studies, maybe, or what you're doing, your current work. So we've been talking to some candidates that are web developers. So whenever it comes to the web development course, probably they will know much better than anybody else. Other people, maybe they, for the master of data science, they already are data consultants. So it depends on what you're doing as, as well. So there could be some courses, it could be easier for you. Some courses, maybe they require a little bit more studies. We say like, if you have to engage uh, like 10, 12 hours, Per, per week to study so this is something that you can do over the weekends during maybe your evenings but it is taught for people who are actually working yeah i yeah you definitely have to allocate your time and to to make it fit for this kind of uh, uh, training that you're gonna take and uh, and yes but yes Okay, I don't know if there are any further questions, otherwise uh, we're going to wrap it up here. This recording will be available to you as well, so we're going to send it back in case you want to rewatch it. And myself, Chiara, and Rosario, Ricardo, everybody is available to talk to you in case you have more questions about our programs and the future of computer science as well. <laughs> okay, I see there is another question. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Tomaso is a full stack developer and you provide material in some specific programming languages or I can use my preferred program programming language. We will be mostly focusing on open source uh, programming languages, which are up to date. Um, so, um, I mean, for, for your projects and for those modules that will work, will be requiring you like uh, yourself, like carrying on a project or for the dissertation itself, uh, it's likely that you can focus on the, on the programming languages that you already know. Uh, but for the, the courses itself, we're making choices in terms of what on what programming lang language uh, we will be focusing on. Okay, thank you. This is something that is asked very often. Thanks for that. Okay, so um, thank you so much, Ricardo, again. And thank you everybody for attending. Um, will be again available for you and see you soon maybe next Thursday for um, a deep dive on our methodology and platform with Lucas Tecchio is head of content he will introduce you to the platform and show you how to use it what the benefits that we we have with the, the platform and the program that we offer okay thank you it's been a real pleasure for me as well goodbye everybody thanks thanks a million